ready for the word of the Lord. I'm ready for the word. Ready for the word. Grab your Bible. Grab your Bible. Come on, jump on your feet. Be the last time you have to get up. We want to go and read one verse of scripture. Psalm 1. Psalm 1 verse 1. One verse of scripture. Psalm 1 verse number 1. Blessed is a man. If you don't have a Bible, we got one on the screen for you. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Somebody ought to say amen for the reading of God's word. This morning, we're in part number one of our brand new series called Playlist. This morning, from the topic. A long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Look at somebody say, a change going to come, a change going to come. Come on, put your hands together for the word of the Lord. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you even for that song, God, that shocked so many that we play an old school jam in the house of the Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Please don't strike us with lightning. But God, we ask you to bless us. Allow us to open up our hearts and our minds. We might be able to receive your ungrafted word which is able to save our soul. We'll be ever so careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, somebody who loves them ought to say amen. amen. May be seated in the presence of the almighty God. A change is going to come. I tell you, uh, God put this series, he put this message on my heart several, several months ago, and I wish uh, I could tell you it came about uh, through a dream or through a vision uh, but actually I have uh, some small children one of them was up here dancing earlier and anytime you have small children um, they watch a lot of movies they watch movies and this particular movie that my daughter uh, had uh, both of my younger daughters had got so uh, heavily involved in is a movie by the name of Trolls I don't know if anybody has watch trolls uh, I've not only watched trolls one time I've mean, not just watched it five times not just watched it 20 times or 100 times but almost every day for the last several months we have been watching this movie called trolls in my house uh, but Carson who's three years old uh, she every day said daddy can I hold your phone so I can watch trolls uh, she wants to watch trolls and here as as many of us who will uh, who will agree when our children are watching movies sometimes we pay attention to the movies sometimes we don't we're sitting there we're doing our own thing uh, but after a while as I began to watch this movie with them I told the church just a few months ago I kind of sat up on the end of my seat and I said them boys singing y'all not gonna talk to me here I, I, I say they, they say I mean the the music in the in the movie was it was captivating it was captivating it and I said man I, it's just absolutely amazing on how uh, the music in a movie can snatch you and even arrest your attention they they were singing a song uh, September I believe it's earth wind and fire I never heard it but my cousin told me about it uh, September and and what happened was I was listening to that song and I said man that that sounds so good and then it made me go and find the real song September y'all not gonna help me here let me let me look on this side of the room because ain't nobody gonna help me all my halos over here uh, I E I I don't even know what they saying but I, -E -I. but anyway so that locked me down and my, my point is it, 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 it's a movie a movie got me to the point to where I, I had no secular music on my mind I had no secular of music in my heart on my phone in my playlist but that little children's movie caused me uh, to begin to hear what they were singing and it made me start tapping into some different songs and I thought about life I thought about how life is so to the point to where it's simply it's music. I, I told the church earlier today that my wife, me and my wife, we've been married for 12 years now. And I say whenever it is that me and my wife are on a, are on a date or when we're loving on each other, I, I know maybe y'all are a little safer than I am, a little deeper than I am, uh, but we don't listen to Mahalia Jackson. 
Amen, somebody. I say, man, when, when, I'm with, when I'm with my wife, when I'm with my bae, uh, we don't, I, I, I want to go to the upper room and all, but we don't listen to Mahalia. We, we, don't, we, don't, listen, we don't listen to uh, William Murphy, William McDowell, none of the Williams. We don't listen to any of them, but no, I, I, told, the church, I told the church this morning that we, every now and then I put a little Isley in. And I tell her, I look her square in her eyes, and I say, girl, I'm living for the love of you. Come on, y'all. My, my, point, my point is, my point is, and so many people, are, now this, for all my super saved folk, this might not be the message you want to get in on. For all my super deep people who just watch TBN all day and the Word Network, uh, you might not want to get in on this, but I, I believe you will agree with me that music puts you in a certain mood. Music puts you in a certain mood. Such is why our new series is called Playlist because music, whether you want to agree with it or not, is very, very powerful. Even the Bible talks about Jesus. The last night that he was here on earth and on his earthly ministry, the Bible says that they took communion in the upper room. And the Bible says they sung a hymn and they walked out into the night. Jesus sung him. Jesus was to the point to where he loved music as well. And even the people of God, every time the people of God gathered, there was music there. Whether it was times of grieving, music was there. It was whether it's time of celebration, music was there. But the type of music that I'm talking about now is not Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's not the Isley Brothers, not Sam Cooke. But this is vertical worship. The type of music that I'm talking about now, and I told us at the beginning of the year, this is our year of expansion, and I prophesied in this house that our music, our worship was going to be expanded in a way, and in every area to where when we worship God in a way, Psalm 22 and 3 says that when I praise him and I worship him, that he will inhabit the very praises of his people. And I said in this house, we're going to worship God so much that where even if it won't even be any need for a sermon. It won't be any need for a message because the worship was the message. That, that our worship, the very kabah, the very glory of God, like in the day of Solomon, the Bible said that God's presence came into the temple so strong that the priest could not even enter into the temple. And that's what I'm looking for in this house, that where our worship will shift from a selection to encountering God. I'm looking for our worship to shift from just singing a song to actually acknowledging the manifested presence of God because music is very very important you've seen it with young brothers walking down the street they be talking to themselves or rapping to themselves they be flowing to themselves and they be that music the beat just have them all mad have them all upset and I be saying who they mad at they just walking down the street just come on y'all ain't gonna talk to me all my earth all my all my bones thugs and harmony. I don't know what they be saying. Come on, y'all. What, what, what am I saying? It's something about it's something about music that it arrests our mind and our hearts and our soul. And that's why you must be very careful the music that you listen to. See, see, I'm a pastor now. I'm not I'm not playing with you this morning. I'm a pastor, so I tell you and I endorse, if I will, listening to a certain type of music when it comes to our wives and it comes down to our husbands in an intimate relationship when you let me say it plainly when you're married Amen. Uh, Y'all ain't help me here. When you're married, when you're together, and you're and you're 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 trying to glorify God and edify God in every area of your relationship, but I do not endorse some of this music that we have. They call it trap music. I do not endorse some of this music that, that promotes uh, sex, illicit sex. It promotes drugs. Uh, they tell you I'm in love with the cocoa. They'll tell you you can blame it on the. I, 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 go boy, come on, y'all don't, y'all don't know nothing here. I, I guess I guess got the super save crowd this morning, boy. I'm gonna take this show on the road because y'all don't listen to nothing but 1360. I see. What am I telling you? This trap music and all this stuff that's here that promotes illicit sex and promotes drugs and promotes the police. It's a spirit behind it. Come on, I didn't get in a whole lot of fights when I was growing up because I'm a little fella, so I made friends with folk, and then I not only made friends with you, I was fast. Y'all ain't gonna help me. So whenever it is, you get ready to 
to fight when something jump off I know how to jump out y'all ain't gonna I, I ain't got nothing to prove with nobody you're gonna be seeing the bottom of them gangsters they still wear gangsters and the reball gang you don't see the bottom of them gangsters running down the street my point is that whenever it was when something get ready to jump off we put some music on yeah yeah come on we get we be sitting there getting all crunk I'm, my, I'm the littlest thing in there but I get I listen to that music I get we be pushing each other and we be getting oh yeah we finna do this go oh, y'all ain't boy I tell y'all y'all doing me real wrong today you know you listen to some music to get you get your crunk and get your hype to get you because it does something to you the devil the devil knows this even in the book of Daniel, the Bible says when King Nebuchadnezzar wanted the people to worship his idol, the Bible says he told them when you hear the sound of the music, he says, I want you to bow down and I want you to worship my image. And the devil is doing the same thing today. He puts his messages in our music. He puts his messages in what we're listening to. That's why even as a parent, you got to walk around sometime and snatch that phone away off their head see what they listening to delete that foolishness off that phone and tell them not up in here you got to have a dekemde matumbo anointing not not in my house come on y'all you got to say no you're not finna do this you're not finna listen to this foolishness i'm not finna buy this foolishness you're not finna listen to this and here my mama my mama was so saved i tell you my mom was saved i couldn't listen to nothing in her house but when i was with my daddy y'all ain't gonna talk and my mama house was, I told y'all a few weeks ago, my mama was so, my mama was gangster. My mom, I closed my door one too many times. My mama took the door off the hinges. <laughs> and she said, you, she said, you're not going to close nothing in this house but your mouth. That's the only thing you're going to close. You don't pay no bills in here. You don't run nothing. I ain't had nothing but a little shotgun, little room. My friends used to call my mama the warden. They used to call my mama. They, say, I, I ain't, they ain't say we going to COVID house. They say we going to Alcatraz because my mama didn't play the radio. You could not even, she wouldn't play nothing. And I, my point is that that's how we have to get back to and get involved in the lives of our family in the lives of our children. And here God knows how important music is and and songs is because he devoted an entire book to nothing but songs an entire book that's what sitting right there in the middle of your Bible is what we call the book of songs It's nothing more than the book of songs it's songs everyone from from number one all the way to 150 is just songs that is accompanied with music and the songwriters is seven of them. David didn't write them all. Seven songwriters. And there are some songs that we don't know who wrote them. They call them orphan songs. But I love the book of songs because no matter where you are in your life, you can find a song that relates to you. If, you, if you're fearful, there are songs that, that let us know of what to do when we're fearful. If you are in need of security, if you're in need of repentance, if you're in need of just simply worshiping God. And then uh, throughout the entire book, you'll find something called praise. There's praise. In fact, the last chapter and the last verse says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And here I love the book of Psalms because the book of Psalms is not like you and I. See, you and I, we put on airs. We try to make it seem like everything is okay. How you doing today, brother? I'm blessed and I'm highly favored of God. Uh, how, how you doing, ma'am? I'm God's anointed and everything. All is all is well. Anybody ever anybody ever ask somebody how they doing and you got and you got King James version? Uh, Thou lovest the Lord thy God, and him only shall I trust. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with powerful confessions or positive confessions, but here it is, oftentimes, hear me good, if I live superficially, I will become superficial in my relationship with God. What do I mean? If I'm so used to putting the front on with you trying to make it seem like everything is right, now when I come into my relationship with God, I have to come as if I got to come up to something. No, no, no. I don't have to put on any airs when I talk to God, but no, I can talk to him. He's not afraid of my emotions. See, not he doesn't get angry with me with my emotions, but no, he wants me to come to him when I'm upset, when I'm fearful, when I'm mad, when things are 
are going on in my life. He'd rather me come talk to him than I me come talk to you. And oftentimes what happened with us, we get so superficial in our walk with one another. We carry that same relationship with God Almighty. But no, he told me I am to acknowledge him in all my ways. He said I am to come to him humbly but boldly before the throne of grace. See, we run danger not telling God what to do. But no, our problem is, oh, let me, let me rewind. I said that wrong. Our problem is not necessarily telling God what's wrong. But our problem is when we run danger in telling God what to do. When you tell God what to do, saying, God, if you don't show up by next week, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're going to wait till the next week. <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to do. You got, we got to stop putting God on ultimatums. We got to stop telling God if you don't do this or if you don't do this, if you don't make a way here, if you don't show up this way, then God, I need you to do this. No, we ought to let our requests be made known unto God and we ought to back up and let him deal with it. It's up to him. It's up to his decision. He is God all by himself. The very first psalm here, and we're going to walk through this book of Psalms, we're not going to go through all 150, no, uh, no we're not. We're going to cherry pick through this book of Psalms because I believe that there's a blessing nestled in these pages and something that God wants to say to us. But the one that we're going to key on this morning is found right there in Psalm 1. Look with me, Psalm 1, it's on the screen, Psalm 1, verse number 1. It says, blessed is the man. Hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have to stop there because the psalmist tells me right off the bat what a blessed man or a blessed woman or a blessed person looks like. That word blessed simply means happy. How oh, I know I, 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 not just blessed uh, as relates to the blessings of the Lord, but literally happy. It really could read, oh, happy is he happy. And here. Our life is filled with individuals who want to be happy. Our life is filled with individuals, even in our constitution. It tells us in our constitution that we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. And that they, uh, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Uh, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of, come on, help me preach here, the pursuit of happiness. Even in our constitution, it tells us that it's okay for us to pursue happiness, but it doesn't promise us happiness. Oh, my goodness, because can I tell you that the only way that you and I can find true happiness is not in a thing it's not in an object, it's not in a position, it's not in a place, but it's in a person by the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Happiness can only be found in him. So many individuals are unhappy because we are pursuing everything else but the one that we're supposed to be pursuing. Can I, I don't care how much money you make. That's what we say. If only I've made six figures. I'll be happy. If only I lived in this community, I'll be happy. If only I was driving this vehicle, I'll be happy. If only I can marry this person, I'll be happy. If only I had not have married this person, I would be, would be happy. And we're always trying to pursue things. And the enemy knows this. That's why he always puts things in front of us. And if we're not careful, we will wrap our emotions in things. And so when he touched the thing, he's touched our happiness. Boy, but come on, can I encourage you today that my happiness is not in a person, it's not in a job, it's not in money, it's not in anything, but my righteousness and my happiness is only in God. That's what Jesus said. If you seek me first and all of my righteousness, he said, then and only then will I add these things unto you. So whenever I go after God, 
God in a real and a powerful and a fresh way. He will add these things to my life. Come on, it doesn't come by having fun. It don't care. I don't care how much you smoke. I don't care how much you drink. I don't care how much you party. I don't care how much sex you have. You still will not be happy because there's a God-sized hole in every one of us that it can only be filled by God and my pursuit of God. Not my pursuit of happiness, but when I go after him, he will in turn give me not happiness, but he'll give me joy. And I heard Nehemiah say, the joy of the Lord, it is my Oh, y'all not helping me today, but here we got, I'm going to push on through here. I'm coming around the mountain. When I come, I'm coming through here. I believe I will. <laughs> here. Oh, he says, give me verse 1 again. It's going to get better. Look at verse 1. It says, blessed is the man or happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. See, let me tell you up front, this message is not going to go the way that you think it's going to go. <laughs> there is... <laughs> A change going to come, but the change going to come when I change. <laughs> the change will come when, when I change. So, so the psalmist tells me that change will happen or blessedness will happen or happiness will happen when I change is on the screen. When I change who I listen to or change who you listen to. Yeah, he does. He says change who you listen to. He says, blessed is a man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly. Change who you listen to. Oftentimes, our life is a wreck because of who we're listening to. Oftentimes, our life is not producing the results that we want it to produce because of who we're listening to. Oh, I know that pastor, your pastor is Pastor Steve Harvey. And you listen to him every, every morning from 6 to 6.15. He gives you a word from the Lord. But let me tell you, I don't care how many strawberry letters you write. You cannot, I never listened to it. My cousin told me about it. But you cannot, you cannot listen to Bishop Harvey. And allow him to lead you. I know he dedicates his first segment to the Lord. But then the other four hours, he cussing and fussing and saying this. And, and then he got, he got what I call that mammy made theology. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. You, you know what mammy made theology is. Uh, you know, uh, godliness is next to cleanliness. You do know that's not in the Bible, right? <laughs> if you take one step, God going to take two. You do know that's not in the Bible, right? Oh, here's our favor. You know, God don't like ugly. You do know that's not in the Bible. That, that's that's, that's uh, what we call, let me tell you this way. Our, maybe you receive it. Our mother made theology. No, <laughs> mammy made. That's mammy made theology. Meaning, just because it sounds good. Just because it feel good, I cannot listen to someone who is not authorized to speak on behalf of God. I'm not just preaching against him. I'm just trying to make a point. It, it doesn't have to be him. It could be anyone that we're listening to that we base our life and the principles that they say based off of what they say. Here, I'm not just talking about him because he does a lot of good things. I ain't throwing no shade at the brother. I love the brother. But my point is, as a believer, as a person who says that I'm after the things of God I must make sure I'm mindful who I listen to there are two different kinds of individuals there's an individual who won't listen to anybody and there's an individual that listens to everybody here there are some people they base their entire life based off of their own decision making and when you're the only one calling the shots in your life when you're the only one that got something to say about how your life ought to go Houston we have a problem. Oh, come on, my goodness. What am I saying? The, the proverb writer says that there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I cannot base my decision making solely off of what I want to do. But no, I must acknowledge God and let God help me. And God not only tells me to acknowledge him, he puts people in our lives that help us and steer us and guide us. There are some of us, we're so stubborn, we don't listen to no 
nobody. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me how to do it. I'm grown you, and, and I'm going to do what I want to do and how I want to do. So nobody know anybody like that. You don't know nobody that, and no matter how much you tell them. No, no, the bridge is out. Don't drive across the bridge. No, you don't tell me what to do. And then all of a sudden, uh, here, there, you're trying to tell them, I've been there, baby. I've done that. I've seen this before. Come on, parents, talk to me. You've been here. You just didn't fall off a turnip truck somewhere. But no, here, you've seen what has happened. You've seen this thing. They don't love you. They talking about, that's not your friend. You're trying to tell them and instill them and instruct them, but you can't tell them nothing. But my grandma said, hard head. That, that ain't what I was going to say, but y'all finish it from me. Here, here, hard head. Here, here what, what am I saying there? Whenever it is you're big and bad enough to do what you want to do, you're going to hit some bumps in the road. They say that experience is the best teacher. I say the devil is a liar. I say the experience of somebody else is the best teacher. I don't have to hit my head and stump my toe. I don't have to be in foreclosure to know it's not a good thing. I don't got to go to jail to know it's not a good thing. I don't got to go to prison to know it's not a good thing. Thing, but I can hear you telling me and instructing me and giving me wise counsel to know I can learn from your experience and I can alter my life. I'm trying to help somebody today to know we need to learn to change who we listen to. And then there are the other people that want everybody to co-sign on their decision. There are other people that only will make a move if they can get 12 signatures. Well, what you think about it? Well, how you feel? And then my personal favorite, not just the people that want you to co-sign on everything, it's the people that come to you asking you for your opinion and they really don't want it. All right, I'm looking over here. No, those, anybody ever been in a conversation with somebody asking you, well, what you think about this? And I love it. Pastor, what you think about this? And I say, well, I put my preaching voice on. Well, I believe the Lord, that God is telling you to do this. And they say, well, I'm just going to go on and do it. Well, why did you just waste my hour? Can I have, can I please have my hour back, sir? I just wasted my time talking to somebody who already had their mind made up. And here the Bible tells us that in the multitude of countless, so there is safety I must be able to find me somewhere a house of God the Bible says in Jeremiah 3 15 he says God gives us pastors after his own heart that feeds us with knowledge and feeds us with understanding I must submit myself somewhere and submit myself to a man of God or a woman of God that I must trust the words that are coming out of their mouth if I don't trust their counsel if I don't trust their words then why in the world do I submit myself to their authority here it is there are people that are called your pastor and won't do anything you say come on I'm talking real good preach pastor Kobe I think I amen my own self there are people they'll call your pastor in fact you're not their pastor you're just their favorite preacher because they just love to hear you preach but they're not going to do anything you say they love calling you mama but they don't want to do anything you say they like calling daddy when they need something but they don't want to do anything you say but if you would do what I tell you to do you wouldn't have to borrow them 20 dollars every other Friday I'm trying to help somebody <laughs> so I got to change <laughs> change who I listen to I must decline <laughs> bad advice <laughs> I must decline bad advice that's what he said blessed is the man that don't walk after the counsel of the ungodly he says but what, is it, what else does he say look at the verse again he says but he says he he stands uh nor stands in the way of sinners. So I must not only be mindful of who I listen to, I must be mindful of who I'm hanging with. Uh huh. So the blessed person, the happy person, is mindful who they listen to and who they are around. Can I tell you that it's one and the same? That I can't hang around you or be with you and here it is, you not influence me. Either you're going to influence me or I'm going to influence you. Grandma said, if you lay down with dogs, you will get some fleas. He says, don't walk after the counsel of the ungodly. Now he says, or stand in the way of sinners. I cannot be a born again believer 
with my heart and my mind made up to go after the things of God and the only people I hang around care nothing about my God. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. Now, Jesus was the friend of sinners. Jesus friended people. I hear you. Jesus friended people not for them to change him, but for him to change them. But some of us are not strong enough to hang around people all day, every day, talking about this and talking about that because they're putting this thing in my spirit. Come on, you've heard it be said, you show me your friends, I will show you your future. If you show me your friends, who you're hanging around, if the people that you're rubbing elbows with, those are the people that you're going to be like or the people or the person that you are right now but I must learn not to stand in the way of sinners I can't have a best friend that's a male that's always talking about ladies always talking about women always talking about this and that how fine this one is how fine that one is and you're always in my ear if I always hear that and you're always in my ear now I'm gonna start looking around trying to find me a shorty too y'all ain't gonna help me up here I'm gonna start looking around trying to find me a splacker Belly. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all know nothing about that. Anyway, here, I'm gonna be, well, y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm gonna be looking around. Preach, Pastor. <laughs> Ladies, y'all don't get off the hook. I know you think Morris so fine. Chestnut, that is. Denzel and, and the other dude off of the Shamamor, yeah, him too. I be looking at him, I say, Put some clothes on. That's what I say. Just please put some clothes on. That was just, give me a good heart. Put some, put some clothes on, sir. It's not, put your shirt on, man. I mean, what are you doing? Nobody want to see all that. So the Bible says, <laughs> I can't always, I ain't hating on nobody. I hear y'all right over there. I hear you right over there. I hear right over there. <laughs> My point is, y'all ain't going to get me start talking now. I told y'all because my our washing machine broke down a few weeks ago, Miss Pepper. My wife was finna go to the laundromat. I said, baby, you don't gotta go to the laundromat, just wash them right here. <laughs> Tell the music. <laughs> my point is. <laughs> That I must be careful who I'm hanging with. That makes sense, anybody? That when that's always in my ear and you're always talking about this or always talking about that, you will affect me. Look what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Let me blaze out of here. He said, don't be fooled by those who are saying such things. He said, for bad company corrupts good character. If you have bad company, people around you pulling you down, putting something in your ear, sowing discord and division and lies and talking about this and talking about that, that will eventually bother my good character. But I know I must surround myself with the kind of people that are like-minded. Not people that are just like me, but people that are like-minded that want to please God. That want to bring honor to God. That want to please God in every area of our life. You know the kind of friends that I want? I want the kind of friends that were there in Mark chapter 2. The Bible said there was a sick of the palsy man. He was on a bed, but he was carried by four friends. Now some of my friends, they wouldn't carry me across the street. Some of my friends, they wouldn't carry me up the road around the corner. But this man, friend, they had him on this stretcher and they found him Jesus. They took him straight to Jesus. The Bible said when they got to the door, there were so many people there, they could not even even get inside and seek some of my friends they would have said well you out of gas I guess you'll meet Jesus another day somewhat not today you won't see him today because there's too many people here but not this brother friends the Bible said they climbed up on the roof and what did they do they peel back the roof they did whatever they needed to do to get their friend in the presence of Jesus those are the kind of friends I need that will do whatever they need to do to get me in the presence of the Lord okay you don't want to go to church today 
today, girl. You park your car, I'll come by and I'll pick you up. No, you're going to get out of this room. You're going to open up them blinds, come from up under that bed. Stop being in depression. Stop sitting there in your pity party. We're going to pop the balloons on your pity party. We're going to throw your pity party cake away. And we're going to come and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we're going to be glad they're in. Those are the kind of friends I need that will tell me, no, you can make it. No, you can come out of whatever you're in. You can endure hardness as a good soldier. Everything won't be made in the shade, drink and lemonade. I need the kind of friends that tell me, stop complaining. Stop whining. Get up off your rusted the you sitting on the couch. You looking at me right there. Get off the couch and go get a job and stop talking about how bad how bad life is. I'm about to feel my helper. I don't know. I got I need some friends. I need some friends that don't that don't just sit up and tell me that it's okay for me to be complacent. We love surrounding ourselves and I got to move. We love surrounding ourselves with people who co-sign on our foolishness. We don't like being around anybody that's going to hold us accountable. We don't like being around anybody who's going to say, well, I don't know about that. We don't like being around nobody. See, see, when somebody, when you come to someone and they give you some real godly counsel and godly advice, they're not going to tell you what you always want to hear. They'll say, baby, all he did was not take the trash out and you finna leave? I don't know about that now, baby. I don't know now. Maybe... No, you got a good man now, you know. I know he don't take the trash out, but that, that's not grounds for divorce. Uh, sir, you mean to tell me you're going to leave her because she don't cook every day? I told y'all, I'm going to keep telling you about this brother in the barbershop. That just blew my mind. He saw me coming in and say, Pastor, my wife don't cook. I'm out of there. I'm tired of eating Fruit Loops every day. I said, man, when last time you been to Walmart? They got a whole aisle dedicated to cereal. If you don't tired of eating Fruit Loops, get you some Rice Krispies. You can get you some. You can get you some some Frosted Flakes. Better get you some Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I don't know whatever it is you like. Here, you don't got to just say, "Oh, I'm out of here," because she don't do what I want to do. Oh my goodness, I could go a little further. All the kids should be in children's church anyway. I want to go a little. I want to go a little further. I want to. I want to get a little. Go a little deeper because. If you don't do it, somebody will. Like, like, like this some kind of transaction. No, no, this ain't my girlfriend. This is my wife. I, just because I don't get what I want, I can't uh, sit there and pout and take my ball and go home. Or go somewhere else. Let me go back to this right here because y'all ain't. <clears throat> y'all don't like me today, but that's okay. That's okay. It's been a long time coming. For the chain. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. Let me get y'all out of here. Look what the Bible says. Is anybody, is this blessing anybody? Is this blessing anybody? Don't fool me now. Don't fool me. Look what the psalmist says. I'm still, Lord, have mercy. I'm still in verse 1. <laughs> he says, Noah sits in the seat of scoffers. King James says, sit in the seat of the, the scornful. So not only must I change who I'm listening to, if I want to change, not only must I change who I I'm hanging with if I want to change. I, almost, I also need to change seats. You see the steady progression? When a person that's not going after the things of God, they're walking. Then he says standing. Now he's seating. He's sitting down. I must change. See, see, to sit down, see, in the Jewish custom, to sit down was to say, uh, I got something to say. To sit down was, everybody come gather around me. I want to tell you something. I told the, uh, the, the church at 9 o'clock service that the Jewish rabbis, they didn't stand. They didn't have pulpits like this. But no, they would sit and everyone would gather around to hear what the rabbi had to say. They would sit down to sit is the is the indicative of I'm gonna stay here for a while and I have something on my mind. But David is not talking about individuals who are believers that are seated or who have something to say. He says it's the scoffers. It's the people who always have something negative to say. They scoff at the things of God. They, 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 they make everything, here's the definition, they make people feel 
worthless or beneath even their consideration. Scoffers. I told you it's going to be like your mama. Sit down somewhere, you big head self. Ain't about worth nothing. Oh, you going to That's how we do. Mm. That's all. Mm. Scoffers. Uh, come on, the people that always have something negative to say. Oh, my goodness. Grandma again say, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Let me challenge you, because if you had to divorce all your negative words and conversations, how much would you be talking? Or would you be a mime? Would you, you wouldn't. You be using sign language. I mean, you you wouldn't have nothing to say. You you be stuck in your well, y'all boy. It's a tough crowd today. Here, uh, what what am I saying? I'm saying that if I didn't have anything nice to say or good to say, I would not be saying anything. If I'm a scoffer, but I must surround myself with individuals who speak positively. I must surround myself with individuals that don't tear down, especially the things of God. That don't tear down individuals and tear down people telling them how bad they are tell them how many mistakes they made and that's oftentimes why people who are outside of the ark of safety or the family of God don't come talk to us because they know we're going to tell them how wrong and how bad they are they don't need to hear about how bad they are they know they're bad but it's my job to encourage them to build them up it's my job to tell them that you don't always have to be how you are now how you live and God is not pleased with that God is not happy with that but God the the same God that pulled me out, the same God that saved me, the same God that transformed my mind, my thoughts, and my pattern, he can do the same thing to you. And I need to learn how to be able to speak that over my family life and speak that over everyone that comes in my sphere of influence because the psalmist says, I'm happy when I learn how not to sit in the seat of the scornful, not always scoffing and mocking and talking about something that doesn't, work, doesn't mean anything. Not worth a hill of beans. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, let me look at verse 2. I got to get out of here. I thought this was going to be a good one. Verse 2 says, <laughs> verse 2 said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The happy person. The blessed person. Our Delight should be in God's word. Oh, you want to be happy? You want to be blessed? Change your desires. I, I must pray. It's on the screen. I must pray, Lord, change my desire. See, everything else in life can't make me happy. Then when it comes to the word of God or the things of God, I'm bored. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, I'm, I'm so depressed in my life. That picture, that woman uh, seems to me she's depressed. She's overwhelmed. She's uh, probably overworked, probably underpaid. Things aren't going the way she wants them to go. Uh, and oftentimes what we do is we hold God hostage to our desires. We have desires that we want. We have things that we want to attain. We have things that we want to do. And when they don't happen, now all of a sudden I'm upset. Now all of a sudden I'm depressed. But I must learn to change my desires and say, Lord, I want my desires to become your desires. I want you, God, to put your desires in my heart. That's what the psalmist said in Psalm 37 and 1. He says, fret not yourself because of evildoers, because they're going to be soon cut down like grass. You're sitting there looking at all these individuals that got all this money, living in all their lifestyle, living in all their homes and doing what needs to be done. But hear what God is saying to us all. He's saying you can't look at people on television and say, oh, I wish I had what they had. I wish I can live where they live and drive where they drive. No, the Bible said they're going to soon be cut down like the grass and they're going to wither away. But here God instructs us. He said, commit thy way unto 
the Lord and he said he shall give you the desires of your heart what am I saying God will put the desire in your heart and then he will give you the desire God will put the desire in your heart he'll tell you which way to look he'll tell you which way to go he'll tell you where to fill the application out you wasn't even trying even to get a job over there but then something happened on the inside say go and talk to them go put an application in go give them your resume and that's exactly where God wanted you to be at here can I tell you it happens all the time God leads us in where he wants us to be God directs us in where he wants us to go but when I allow my desire to be his desire I cannot be so excited about what's going on on television and then I don't give God any of my time I don't give God anything that's going on in my life I don't give nothing to him until I have a problem I treat God like he's some type of spiritual umbrella I only pull him out when it's raining Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I only put them out. When the sun is gone and it's raining, now I'm calling on God. Lord, help me. God, I need you to deliver me. Lord, help me. I need you to save me. But no, I, when I change my desires, I can be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't wait till they got thrown in the fiery furnace to have a relationship with God. But no, what God, they already had a relationship with God. So when they got thrown in the fire, when they threw them in the fire, God was with them. Can I encourage you today that God will be with you through the fire through the flood when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord he'll lift up a standard against our enemy God wants to help you he wants to be your re rewarder God will be the lifter upper of your hung down head God will strengthen you when you feel like you're weak when you got the towel in your hand ready to throw it in God will give you the strength and God will tell you I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me when you change your desire the Lord he'll help you when you feel like there's no help he'll strengthen you when you feel like all hope is gone I'm trying to encourage you today when you change your desire listen what the Bible says in Psalm 19 and 7 he said the law of the Lord is perfect God's word is perfect I want you to pray I want you to ask God I promise you I did this when I first got saved I could not get into the Bible I couldn't understand it I'm saying what are y'all so excited about it's the same book it's the same stories he died okay we know already what's so exciting about it ain't nobody gonna be real with me I couldn't get into it I didn't understand it I didn't understand all the thou and the thuses and the lovers and all that stuff and what I did I prayed and I said God give me a hunger for your word God give me a thirst for your word give me an appetite for your word and that's what you must do you must ask God Lord I know you didn't give me this book God for me to get to the point to where I don't understand it you didn't give me this book you're not playing hide and go seek with me and want me to have this book and I don't understand nothing about it so something's got to be wrong with me God help me that way I can understand your word help me the way I have an appetite and a hunger for your word I can play all day words with friends but then when it comes down to the word oh, I'm getting sleepy I can sit there and play on my phone all day long text all day long but then when it comes to the things of God now all of a sudden I don't get it and I don't understand it no the devil is a liar the psalmist said that the Lord the Lord's word is perfect it revives our soul come on somebody the word of God have you ever been flatlined have you ever thought that you wasn't gonna make it you're down and out but then you came to the house of the Lord and got a word and it revived you it resuscitated you and you messed around and got a second wind oh that's what Ezekiel did Ezekiel went down in that valley of dry bone and the Bible says he didn't know what in the world was going on and here he saw all that on that entire armor they were down they were dry and the Bible said those bones were very dry and here the Lord asked Ezekiel he said Lord can the Lord he said he said the Lord said Ezekiel can these bones live Ezekiel said Lord I don't know but you know oh come on somebody and here the Lord told Ezekiel he gave him the method to the madness he said prophesy to these bones he said prophesy and he said to those bones hear ye the word of the Lord and here the bones they came together the foot bone came together with the ankle bone the ankle bone came together with the shin bone the shin bone came together with the knee bone the knee bone got hooked up with the thigh bone the thigh bone got hooked up in the backbone the backbone got hooked up in the neck bone y'all not gonna help me up in here the Lord put them bones back together again and that's what God wants to do in your life he wants to put you back together again 
He wants to revive you. He want to resuscitate you. Oh, come on, hump the dump. I know you sound the wall. I know you had a great fall. I know all the king's horses and all the king men couldn't put you back together again. But have you tried the king lately? Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach it here. I said the king's horses couldn't put them back together. The king's men couldn't put them back together. But have you? I heard Tamla Man say, take me to the king. I need the king to help me, to revive me, to resuscitate me. Look what David said in verse number 10. I'm blazing out of here. Verse 10 says, more to be desired. Talking about God's word. It's more to be desired than of gold. Even fine, much more than fine gold. He says, God, your word is sweeter than a honey on a honey call he's sweet I know oh come on I'm trying to help you I'm talking about the word of God I'm telling you that heaven and earth will pass away but not one crossing of a T not one dotting of an I of God's word will ever fail when you got God's word you got everything you need when you got God's word you don't need no money in your bank you don't need no gas in your tank when you got God's word you got everything you need you can talk about me all you want to you can walk away from me all you want to I got God's word that tell me he'll never leave me nor forsake me he said when my father and my mother forsake me he said the Lord will take me up I don't need nobody all I need is faith and trust in God's word I'm feeling this thing right now I'm getting ready to let y'all go home I've lectured y'all long enough but I see myself on the runway I'm getting ready to take this thing off because I hear the Lord speaking to us today. I hear the Lord talking to us. And he says, whenever you get to a point that where you acknowledge me and you need my word, he said, the blessed man, put the verse back up again. He said that the blessed man, he meditates on my word. Take me back to Psalm chapter one. Psalm chapter one, verse number two. He said, but his delight is the law of the Lord and in the Lord's law he meditates both day and night here God have want to birth something in you today to where a change is going to come when you change who you're listening to when you change who you're with when you change where you're seated when you change your desire he said he's going to change he's going to change you because you're meditating in the word he said to meditate on the word it is the mother of the word it is to talk about the word it is to rehearse the word it is to abandon all outside distraction whenever i meditate on the word God wants to say something to me today and he wants to say it to me in such a way that I can't have no drive by devotional I can't just come to the house of God and want the preacher to pick me up want the preacher to preach my favorite message want the preacher to say something about my favorite verse but no I spent time with God all week long and when I come to the house of the Lord the preacher just simply confirming all that God told me all week long the preacher just agreeing with me Agreeing with the word that God has already spoken over my life. Come on, that's the attitude you ought to have when you come to the house of God. Because you've been cooing the word. The coo sends a signal of an animal. Whenever you see an animal eating, whenever you see an animal eating its prey, whenever you see a cow chewing on the grass, it's making some noise. And whenever you're eating or feasting on the word, you ought to be making some noise. There should be something bubbling in your spirit. There there should be something bubbling in your heart here yeah, I heard Jeremiah say Jeremiah said Lord I'm not gonna preach no more Lord they keep looking at me crazy Jeremiah said I'm out of here I'll never prophesy again I'll never preach again but then Jeremiah said but your word is like fire shut up in my bone come on here somebody God wants to give you he wants to give you a change but the change is going to start it's going to start in you he said you're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water he said you're going to be like a tree that's planted and rooted you ought to look at somebody and say neighbor you ought to bloom where you're planted when you look at a tree a tree is stable a tree is fixated a tree is not flexible a tree not here today 
and gone tomorrow you know why you're not blessed you know why you're not happy because you're in and out because you're up and down because you're wishy-washy because you're in one moment then you're out the next but know the devil is a liar I'm like a tree I'm gonna put my roots down I'm gonna put my friend now I'm gonna get this plot of land and I'm gonna say Lord this way you situated me I'm a bloom where I'm planted I'm gonna let my root go down go down in the ground because when I'm rooted in the word the storm can come the wind can come the rain can come I gotta bend me break me but I will not be broken you can bend me you can scratch me you can claw at me but I gotta bend but don't break kind of attitude come on I feel like a Timex watch I know how to take a licking and keep on ticking come on somebody I'm not gonna let the way you look at me I'm not gonna let it bother me I'm not gonna let the way you talk about me call me to leave the house of God but no I'm flexible if I remain flexible I won't be bent out of shape thank you Bishop Jones I gotta learn to be flexible I'm conformed in him it's in him that I live it's in him that I move because I'm like a tree and I'm planted by the rivers of water I'm getting ready to let y'all go truth and love I bid you a good afternoon I pray I'll see you sometime this week but just before I go I want to leave this with you the Bible says that that tree that planted by the rivers of water it will bring forth its fruit in its season it's gonna produce something it's gonna have some activity in its season I don't know what you're looking for I don't know what kind of fruit you're looking for I don't know what kind of manifestation you're looking for but when you're rooted in the things of God you will get everything you need your fruit will remain your fruit will remain when you remain that's what Jesus said abide in me and my word abide in you and you can ask what you will come on the more I preach the stronger I'm getting the more I preach the more I feel like rearing back and fire come on somebody because God is trying to give you some fruit my fruit won't be your fruit your fruit won't be my fruit but I'm gonna get my fruit in my season come on somebody I know where you was in school they told you about winter they told you about summer told you about spring and fall but God got another season for you it's called due season if you don't be weary and well doing in due season you're gonna reap if you don't faint I got one more season for you not just due season but my season it's my season to be blessed it's my season I'm coming out I'm coming out of here and I'm gonna come out with my hands lifted up I'm gonna come out giving him praise giving him glory giving him the honor come on somebody God trying to do something in your life God trying to produce something but you can't give up now you can't walk away now you can't throw in the towel now because the Lord he won't encourage you be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor will not be in vain why don't you put your hands together and give Give him some praise. I'm getting ready to close. No, no, no. I'm getting ready to close. But I want you to help me close this sermon. If you don't mind standing on your feet and putting your hands together. Because God getting ready to shift your season. God getting ready to change something. There's a change. There's a change on the way. But the change is already here. I heard, I heard Ecclesiastical writer say, I heard him say to everything, there is a season. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pull up what you plant. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. There's a time to cry. There's a time to laugh. But I heard Solomon say, he said he makes everything beautiful in his time. Your problem may look ugly now, but the Lord gonna make it beautiful. 
you must got a mess on your hand but God will take your mess and give you a masterpiece God will take your tragedy and make you triumph God will take your situation and give you the victory I don't know who I'm talking to but a change is going to come a change in my mind change in my marriage change with my babies change with my finances change change somebody ought to say change somebody ought to say change change me god make me god mold me god shake me god change my mind change my walk change my talk somebody say yeah